So here's the thing. If I gave you the option to move to the UK tomorrow, I'm pretty sure 90% of you would manage to pack all of the bags you need to pack over the next few hours and make that move. So the only thing standing between you and moving to the UK is that visa. And the only thing standing between you and the visa is a job. That one job. That job that will change your entire life. So what is the trick to finding that job? Well, you're going to have to stick around if you'd like to find out. So if you have been hearing that very few people have been getting visas to move to the UK off late, very few people are getting jobs, most CVs are getting rejected, I would suggest you take that with a pinch of salt and here's why. If you walk around the UK, you will realize how many immigrants there are simply because of the number of languages you hear being spoken. And apart from that, I know a bunch of people who have made the move over the past one or two years and I'm not even very social. So obviously there's a lot more people making the move. And the fact that a lot of jobs actually advertise saying that they want people from outside the UK is proof that the UK market is not saturated and people are still looking to hire people from outside the UK. So you can be one of the naysayers and assume you're not gonna get a job and move to the UK or you can assume that you are going to get that job and you're gonna do whatever it takes to make that happen. Now enough talking, this is the first thing you need to do. Now, the first thing you need to do is get your CV in place. If you've had a CV that you've been using over the past few years, a CV that you haven't cleaned up, uh-uh, not gonna work. Sit down, spend some time, fix your CV. Plus, your CV also needs to be UK ready. Now, I'm not gonna dwell too much on this because I've made a bunch of videos on this in the past. I will link these videos in the description below so you can read them at your leisure. And assuming you fixed your CV, let's move to the next step. Now, the next step is where to actually look for these jobs. And one of the most commonly asked questions I get is, where do I look for sponsored jobs in the UK? How do I get that job? So let's break that up. We'll start off with healthcare. The first place you should look is the NHS website. And for those of you who aren't familiar with the term, the NHS is the National Health Service, which basically runs all of public healthcare in the UK. So all of the jobs listed in healthcare are usually mentioned on the NHS website, which is brilliant because it's managed by the government, you know, it's accurate, it's authentic, and you're probably not gonna get scammed. All right, so what I would do is type in the kind of role that you're looking for and type visa sponsorship because it would make your entire process easier. And what you will see on the side is a list of openings. Uh, some of them mention that they have visa sponsorship. Some of them very clearly mention that they don't offer visa sponsorship. All in all, I just think it makes your process a little easier because then you know where you stand in terms of that job. You can also filter for salary at the side. Now, if you wanna see all of the openings, you just take off any filters you've put and any keywords you've put and you just hit the search button and it'll then show you all of the healthcare openings in the UK right now that are listed under the NHS. And the other great thing if you see here is it also shows you patterns work patterns like if you want to work full-time or part-time or if you want flexible hours there's also a filter like you can see on the side over there which helps you select what kind of an opening you want now if you are looking at non-healthcare jobs for instance it's a little different let me explain for starters you go to the gov.uk website and for those of you who aren't aware the gov.uk website is quite literally the bible for living in the uk it has all the information from how much a landlord can charge you in terms of a deposit to all your visa requirements, your criteria for actually applying for your visa, for applying for your driving license. It's all on gov.uk. So this is one website you should absolutely bookmark. So you head over to this website and you enter your role again, which is uh, whatever you want to do, and you write out visa sponsorship. And of course, if you want to see all the roles offering visa sponsorship, you don't type in your role, you just write visa sponsorship and you'll see all the current openings that are mentioned right now that have visa sponsorship mentioned as a part of their job description. So either they absolutely offer it or they very clearly are saying that they don't offer sponsorship for this role. Now, in some cases, you might want to explore the options as well. So I've been a brand manager in the past, but I've also worked on digital media. So if I put brand manager, I might be limiting myself. So I ideally don't want to narrow that list down too much. So what I do is I scroll a little to the left and over here you can filter for categories which will definitely help and the reason i say this is because sometimes the roles that you have been doing in whichever country you're coming from might be called by a slightly different name than what it is called over here in the uk and you don't want to lose out on an opportunity just because of that because you didn't put in the exact role as they have over here so i would suggest you keep it slightly open you probably 
filter by your industry or your job category so that you aren't missing out on any opportunities. And like you can see here, there are so many jobs. I mean, there are hospitality jobs, there are jobs in logistics for the people who keep messaging me and asking me about logistics jobs. This is where you should be checking. There are HR jobs, there are jobs in energy, in oil, in healthcare, again, which do include jobs for carers. So there are teaching jobs. So it's all here really. So you just have to spend a little time digging in and figuring out which of these jobs works best. Now, one thing I would suggest is that you read the job description really carefully. And I say this for a reason. In a lot of job descriptions, they mention that visa sponsorship is available. But once you actually start reading the description, you'll realize that they say that they're also looking for people who have the right to work in the UK. That typically means people who are already on a visa in the UK. So they're looking for people on student visas, on dependent visas, or some other visa looking to switch. If you are outside the country looking for a visa to move, this job doesn't really work for you. In some cases, they'll say that they, ha they are offering visa sponsorship, but they are looking for people with a UK driving license and access to a car. Again, they're looking for people in the UK. So that's something you should keep in mind. Now, once you find the opening you like or the openings that you like, assuming you like multiple openings, you can either apply directly from the, the, the gov.uk website or it'll take you to another website if the job opening is hosted on another one and you can apply from there directly. Now, the next place I look for jobs is LinkedIn and LinkedIn is really great because it has a lot of job openings and you do the same process. You type out the role that you're looking for and you type out visa sponsorship or you keep it open if you want to see all the possible roles. But something you should keep in mind is that LinkedIn usually shows you jobs based on your current profile and the job you're currently doing and your search history. So if you're looking for something completely different from what you've already been doing or if you're looking for someone else, you will have to be very specific with the keywords that you use or you won't kind of see the options or the job openings that you want to see. The other great thing about LinkedIn is that it allows you to set an alert for uh, whatever keyword you're looking for. So I suggest you do that. LinkedIn also allows you to use easy apply. So easy apply basically means that you don't have to fill out lengthy forms and sometimes you don't have to have a CV as well. What LinkedIn does is pick up all of the information from your LinkedIn profile and automatically send it to the recruiter or the hiring company or whoever it is in case you choose that option. So if you want to do that, you have to make sure your LinkedIn profile is updated as well or it will pick up incorrect information or outdated information. If you are looking to make the process easier, you can use all of these filters on the left as well and on the top just to make your life a little easier and get where you want to go quickly. You can use the same process again on Glassdoor. You can log in with your Facebook or your Gmail account or create an account and it allows you to set uh, an alert again for the keywords that you're looking for. So I would suggest you set one for visa sponsorship and use the entire same process. And what you will realize is the more and more you actually start looking for jobs in these portals, you will get familiar with the names of the brands that very often offer sponsorship. So you know what to look out for after some time, but it only happens if you're doing this process consistently. So you need to make sure that you're investing time, that you sit and check these openings of these portals every few days, every week, whatever it is, make a schedule, stick to it and actually actively look for openings. Because what happens is, Every time they post an opening which offers sponsorship, there are a lot of takers for that role. So people are going to instantly start applying. If you wait for too long, you've probably missed the bus already. So you have to make it a point to check actively very often. And of course, there is Indeed, which I very often talk about. Repeat the entire process there as well. If you're still with me, that's absolutely brilliant. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click on the bell icon because that is quite literally the only way YouTube is going to show you my content and show you more videos on how you can move to the UK. And while we are talking about this, there's a lot more you can do to increase your chances at landing that job in the UK, which is why if you are very serious about moving to the UK, I would suggest you sign up for my course on moving and you yourself can become an, ex an expert in a couple of days and learn everything there is to know on how you can land that job and how you can get visa sponsorship and move to the UK. If this is something that interests you, I will leave a link in the description below. All you need to do is hit it. Okay, so let me give you a few tips now. There may be times when you're looking for a role. Now, assume you work in HR and you are looking for a sponsorship in the UK. But as you're searching through these jobs, you realize that you can't find any openings for HR. But you have happened to see 
visa sponsorship being offered for the role of a solutions architect. So go back to the company that offered visa sponsorship for the role of a solutions architect, because here's the thing, if they are offering a, a sponsorship for a solutions architect and assuming that the role that HR or whichever other role that you're looking for is on the list of eligible jobs that can be offered sponsorship in the UK, you're in a good place because it already means that this company is a licensed sponsor. So it is authorized to issue skill worker visas. Now they're not specifically looking to offer a skill worker visa for somebody from HR, but they, if they have an opening, and if you turn out to be an absolutely brilliant candidate, they can offer you a sponsorship if you prove your worth. There is an option because they're already licensed sponsors. Now, if I were you, even if I see an HR opening in this company and they don't mention visa sponsorship is offered, I would still apply because you lose nothing. Now, in the next scenario, imagine you are looking for openings and you see this absolutely brilliant opening. You are a perfect fit but they haven't mentioned anything about sponsorship. You are on the fence. You don't know what to do. You haven't seen any up there other openings talking about sponsorship. You aren't sure if you should really apply or not. Here's what I would suggest. The first thing is check if the company is a licensed sponsor or not. Now, if you don't know how to do that, it's really simple. You either go to UK to your sponsors. This is the website and you enter the name of the company and you see if they are, if, if, if a result turns up and if they are, they are licensed sponsors, they can offer you a visa, it's worth giving a shot. You can also do another thing, you can go to the gov.uk website and download their entire list of licensed sponsors, but you would need a laptop to do this because the list is an Excel sheet and it's pretty big. And then you can just do a control F and see if you find their name there. If they're not there, they're probably not licensed sponsors and then you wanna hedge your bets and again decide how you wanna spend your time. Is that it? Not really. Uh, let me explain. A lot of times, companies that are licensed sponsors are not on these lists. And there is a reason why. In a lot of cases, these companies are actually listed according to their parent company name and not according to the name under which they operate. So even though they are licensed sponsors, their names aren't on this list when you're looking because they're listed under their parent names which means that you might lose out on an opportunity if you see this absolutely brilliant opening for which you are perfect because you think their name is not on this list. You can either look for the parent company name and then check the list and see if the parent company is under this list or you can still give it a shot and apply. All right, before I go, here's the thing. If you need any help with making your CV, because that is step number one, I've linked both these videos here. All you need to do is hit it and you'll get all the details on how you can have that perfect CV. And if you feel this video has helped you, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Now, like the British say, toodles.